All right, now being joined by two student athletes from Temple, Shiz Alston and Ernest Aflakpi. And uh, just a couple things before we get started, uh, and this will be good for all week. Uh, no audio recording devices up here on the dais. Uh, just raise your hand. We'll bring the mic around, identify yourself by name and affiliation, and we just ask that you uh, direct your question to a specific student athlete. Uh, no flash photography or video recording is allowed during the pressers, but you, for video, can use the distribution site that's straight back to the left and straight across the tunnel uh, where the video distribution sites. Uh, so we'll open the floor for questions. Yep, right here on the left. Hi, uh, this is for both of you. Mark, Mark Narducci, the Philadelphia Inquirer. Um, with how little time between finding out about Belmont and, and the game, do you guys almost feel like you're back in college and you're cramming for an exam and don't have enough time to study? Yeah, I think it's um, good and bad, you know, because Belmont has just as much time to prepare for us as well. So uh, we just did a lot of film study. As soon as Selection Sunday was over, we had film about 8 o'clock at night. So that was good. Yeah, um, I agree with Shed. Um, we only had, like, um, we had film at 8 p.m. Um, after we found out. Um, we had, like, 30 minutes film. And then uh, we practiced earlier um, today. So... Um, it's the same thing. I think they also had the same amount of time when they found out. So I think it, it's who wants it more. So it's, it's fair game. I think. Yep, here on the left again. Um, what do you know about them in this little bit of time, Shiz? They have very good offense. Um, they like to shoot a three-pointer very well. They get out in transition. Uh, they have a kid who's averaging about 21 and 10, who's going to be a big problem for us. So we have to contain him and contain the shooters. Uh, how, how about the fact they're, they're averaging um, 87 points per game? What do you kind of have to do to slow them down? Um, play defense, um, stick to the game plan, stay focused the whole game, and just worry about us. Uh, we can't control, like, worry about them. We have to just execute our game plan. Any further questions? Yep, here on the left. Carly Roberts, University of Dayton. How do you guys like Dayton so far? And just talk about your experience and if you've been welcomed and the energy. Ernest, can you take that first? Yeah. Um, it's been great so far. They gave us a very warm uh, welcome. Um, it was great. Um, put the red carpet right in front of the buses, and I think that was really neat. Uh, we got cookies while while we entered like the hotel, so it was it was pretty neat. Um, so I like it so far. That's my first time here, and I like it. Cheers. Oh uh, yeah, same. Uh, it's very welcoming here. Very friendly people. So very home feeling. Here in the left. Mark Narducci, the Philadelphia Inquirer. Uh, Ernest, you're, you're coming off arguably your best game. How, how, how much can you kind of build off of that, that kind of effort on both ends of the court? Um, just keep playing hard. Um, just do my job uh, to the best of my abilities. Um, and just play free. Play hard, play free. Any further questions for our student athletes? Cheers. Ernest, thank you for your time. Good luck right. tomorrow night. All right, thank you. And we will be joined by the head coach of the Temple Owls, Fran Dunphy, at 610.
We good? All right, we're now being joined by the head coach of the Temple Owls, Fran Dunphy. All right, Fran. Uh, same deal as before, just raise your hand, we'll bring your mic around. Uh, just name and affiliation, and Fran, if you'd like, you can start with an opening statement. Uh, excited to be in the NCAA tournament, happy to be here in Dayton. Uh, we played here a couple of years back, 2013 actually. Had two great games here and actually spent a lot of time obviously in the Atlantic 10, so we came to Dayton often to play games. So appreciate the facility, the crowd, the enthusiasm, the aura that is here at, at uh, Dayton. So again, thrilled to be here. Questions for Coach Dunphy. Uh, Laurel, we'll go first. Laurel Faylor from the Dayton Daily News. Um, just how does your familiarity with, with Dayton transfer to, over to your student athletes? I don't know that it necessarily does. Well, I can tell them the story of how we did in 2013, and it was a terrific couple of games for us. Uh, but I think they're going to figure it out on their own. We have some veteran leadership, and I'm sure they'll talk a lot about the atmosphere here. And uh, But I, I don't know that my experience is going to help our guys uh, other than just me saying how great a place this is. And, and it's a wonderful environment to, to play in the NCAA tournament here. Joe? Hi, Fred. Joe K with the AP. I'm wondering, as the season kind of reaches its climax, do you find yourself getting a little more nostalgic or treasuring moments a little bit more knowing this is kind of the, the last go around? You know, I, I don't really, Joe, to be honest with you. I think the nostalgia will hit me sometime in mid-April uh, when I was probably going to go on a recruiting mission and then I, and I don't, you know, things like that. But I think at this point you're so busy and so caught up in what is happening in the moment uh, and you're really worried about each and every one of the guys you're coaching. So you don't have much time or really desire to think about yourself in this situation. But thank you for asking. Uh, Mark Narducci, the Philadelphia Inquirer. Fran, I have two questions. One is, what has the last 24 hours been like? And do you, even though you're kind of used to always preparing, do you f almost feel there's not enough hours in the day to prepare for a team you haven't seen? Well, our staff has done a terrific job. I've watched a lot of film and, and, and uh, tried to expose myself to as much uh, Belmont info as I possibly can. But... Uh, but they're in the same boat. They're trying to do what we're doing. We're having a cram session. I was never a very good student, so I didn't do a lot of cramming back in the day, but that's what we're doing now. You know, you don't sleep too much, and you're, you're fired up. You're excited about the opportunity, but you're going to learn as much as you can over the next uh, 24 hours. And secondly, uh, what do you see from Belmont? Well, I think you look at their statistics and they're sort of extraordinary you know shooting 50 percent that's really hard to do with the amount of threes that they take uh, Windler is uh, a guy that uh, obviously a lot of people are talking about and you watch him on film and you say that I'm looking for a weakness and you don't see it uh, he does everything so well and and he's just part of the group that they have and uh, I've watched Rick Bird a lot of years now and I think his teams have always been so well prepared that we're expecting that to happen, obviously, tomorrow. Uh, terrific coach, terrific program, and obviously very, very successful. So it's a, it's a great challenge for us, and we knew that was going to happen if we were going to be lucky enough to be in the NCAA tournament. We are, and we're going to get a great challenge tomorrow. We're here on the left. Hi, uh, Russ Steinberg, SB Nation. Uh, you spent a good amount of time coaching in uh, – traditional one-bid league. Just wondering your thoughts on Belmont getting in after the season that they had and just how hard that is to do as an at-large. Well, I think, they're, I think their body of work, and it's not only this year, I think they have a, a great reputation. So that uh, my guess is, as the, you are on that committee and you're saying, you know, this is really a good basketball program and they deserve this opportunity because of not only this year, but uh, the way they've handled every one of their seasons for so long with, with Rick as their coach. So uh, it's a terrific program. They deserve everything they get. Back right. Nick Herver, University of Dayton. Belmont averages 87.4 points per game, good for second in the nation. What do you need to do tomorrow to slow them down defensively? Well, obviously we need to have the pace be at our 
liking. Not that we're we're not a slow down team. We're a middle of the road probably. I guess we're a little bit above average in terms of our possessions per game. But it's going to be a high possession game. But we have to do a great job of communicating on the defensive end, limiting uh, them getting foul shots, limiting them getting extra possessions, which has been our uh, our comeuppance, to be honest with you. We, we need to do a better job keeping people off the, off the glass so that they don't get extra possessions. And then we have to be really efficient on the offensive end ourselves. And we have to run good offense so that we can be in good position floor balance wise so that we're not giving up easy baskets in transition. Here front right. Uh, Fran, Sean Pastor, Al Staley. Um, I wonder if you could compare uh, Belmont versus Davidson. Mm -hmm. Some numbers are similar. Somebody asked me that uh, today. Who would you compare it? compare Belmont's approach to the game too and they said would it be a team like Davidson and I that that seemed to be a real good example to me uh, and we played Davidson earlier in the year and we got a win but it was very hard fought and, and uh, I thought they shot the ball extremely well I don't think our defense was as good as it needed to be we somehow escaped and survived and uh, it was a terrific win for us uh, so we're going to probably face much of the same tomorrow, just the way they run their offense, the speed and the quickness that they run it with. Uh, and so we're, we're expecting us to have as good a challenge as we can on that defensive end. And then they're going to, when we get open shots, we've got to be as efficient as they are. And so where is thinking college basketball, you know, as you're kind of wrapping it up at this, at this level, where is the game in terms of the you know, there's a lot of controversial things that are surrounding it right now. Yeah, I, I don't think we're perfect. I, I think we need to continue to get better each and every year and, and making good decisions. Uh, I, I think our, the, the profession of coaching is a good one. The business sometimes uh, gets in the way, and I think we have to really pay attention to that. And, uh, but I think we can do our jobs better. I think we can pay attention to the student athlete even more than we do. Uh, but, you know, guide them in the right way that uh, we're going to get everything done with hard work and enthusiasm and energy and, and doing things. Uh, I'm a big Spike Lee guy. Let's do the right thing all the time. But we can do better. But I don't think it's broken. Any further questions for Coach Dunphy? All right, Fran, thank you for your time. Good luck thank tomorrow night. Thank you very night. much. Appreciate it. Yep. All right. uh, next scheduled start of a press conference is 6.35. We will be joined by student-athletes from Belmont at 6.35.
All right, now being joined by a couple of student athletes from Belmont, Dylan Windler and Kevin McLean. Uh, just raise your hand and identify yourself by name and affiliation. We'll bring the mic around to you. Uh, we just ask that you wait for the mic for our transcription purposes and uh, just direct your question to a specific student athlete. So we'll open the floor for questions right here on the aisle. <clears throat> Michael Presti, NCAA.com. For both of you, there was quite a wait between the end of the conference tournament and selection Sunday. Um, what was that like for you guys? Did, did, you, did you follow all the bubble talk? Did you purposely stay away from it? What, what were those days like for you? Kevin, can you take that first? Uh, for us, uh, we just kind of we followed the bubble talk and uh, kind of rooted for different teams and whatnot so that it would help us, like, a bet, give us a better chance to get in. Dylan? It was tough. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of waiting around. Uh, we're one of the first conference tournaments out there. So, you know, it's a, it's a full week of just uh, waiting around. It was our spring break, so we got a few days off, which was nice. But, um, you know, it, it was hard just because, you know, you're, you're out of control at that point. Uh, you can't really control your own destiny, which kind of stinks. But um, it's watching a lot of basketball, um, like you said, rooting for certain teams that you wouldn't normally have to. Um, so we had a lot of, of that to do and just try to stay patient and s stay optimistic, and uh, that's what we did. Yeah, sure. Yep. Just a quick follow up on that. There were a couple of games in other places where there was an upset, so one more spot went off the bubble. When you're watching that, you go, ah, it's going to make it harder. Yeah, for sure. Um, the one that stood out to me the most uh, was Oregon winning late, just because I knew we were right on the edge at that time. And with that upset, um, I knew that hurt us for sure. But I think a lot of things overall went in our favor. Um, it just the, the upsets are what stand out in your mind. But I think a lot of things went in our favor, which, which uh, might not usually happen every year. So I, I think we got very fortunate. Are you right? Nick Kerber, University of Dayton. Uh, this question is for both of you. Not knowing what, if you're going to get in until Selection Sunday, what was the feeling like when they finally announced your name? Dylan? Uh, I mean, it was just pure joy is all I can say. Um, it happened very fast uh, in the selection show. So uh, we, a lot of guys were caught off guard. Some of them weren't even looking at the screen or paying attention. It happened so early. And uh, to be truthfully honest, a lot of guys weren't expecting it. So um, it was just everything that you saw or the videos of our reaction was just pure joy and excitement, um, just having the chance to get in. Kevin? Yeah, for me, it was like I was one of the guys that didn't expect it at all. It happened so quick that I was just like, what? And then, like, just full of excitement, and it was a joyful day. Right here on the left. Hi, Steve Huero from the Belmont Vision. Uh, there was a pretty quick turnaround for you guys with the travel, with the bus, the plane, and then hotel practice and here. Have you guys been able to really take it in? Like this, you're, this is March Madness. You guys are finally here. Have you guys been able to take it in even with all that that huge turnaround? Kevin, for me, I feel like we just wanted that chance to be in here in the, in the tournament. And for us, like no matter what time, it's good for us. Like we're gonna be ready. Dylan. Um. Yeah, it's it, uh, to me, it hasn't really sunk in yet, I don't think. I think once we step out on the floor and, you know, get in that, in that atmosphere that we're going to be in tomorrow, I think it's going to sink in. But as far as the traveling and we practice at a local high school today, you know, it doesn't really feel like we're in that March Madness feel yet. So I think once we step out on the floor today, um, shoot around and kind of get in that, that vibe and atmosphere, I think it's going to sink in that we're, you know, we're actually dancing. We're in this thing right now. So especially if we win a game or whatever or two, and you know, it's, it's really going to um, start getting the thing rolling, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Right here in the aisle on the right, other side by the pillar. Right there, man. Uh, Mark Narducci, the Philadelphia Inquirer. Dylan, could you tell me uh, what you've seen of Temple in the last 24 hours, studying film and everything like that? What what, what you see of them? Uh, yeah, so before uh, we got uh, matched up with them after the selection show, I really hadn't seen – them play once at all this year. Um, so right after the show, I got on ESPN Plus, watched the full game, didn't really have much else to do. So watched the full game, um, learned a little bit about their guys and what they do. Um, obviously, they have a really good backcort in, in the, their three perimeter guys. 
um, all averaging over 15 points a game or so. Um, so they run a lot of pick and roll actions. I think um, at times they kind of just play very free and um, just play ball dominant with their guards and just try to pl play free and confident and ro come off those ball screens and just um, make plays. So it's going to be hard to guard for sure, but I think – um, for our sake, I think we have a better chance of guarding um, good perimeter players than um, getting beat up inside by big post players. So I think it's a good matchup for us. Well, one last thing. Do you almost feel like both teams are in the same position where you're, you're cramming for an exam and you, you don't even have enough time to study? Yeah, it's hard. Um, I have a pretty big group project going on this week um, that I was you know, planning to, to be in this week. And uh, obviously, I don't think it's going to happen now. So. Uh, fortunately, my group uh, that I'm with is covering pretty well for me, so I'm fortunate on that part. But yeah, it's definitely tough um, coming back from spring break. Uh, this is our first week of classes again, so there's a lot going on right now. Here on the aisle. This isn't probably something you're thinking a lot about right now, but not a lot of schools like Belmont have gotten at large bids through the years. Did this send a message at all? Is there, is there an inspiration for other teams from other leagues? Uh, it just gives, you know, hope for those mid-majors at the start of the year. You know, we, we have a chance at an at-large bid. So, you know, when you want to start off those early season games, you know, trying to win every single game that you can because it can pay off um, come at the end of the season. So knowing that, you know, that could be the one game that puts you on or off the bubble at the end of the season. So definitely gives a lot of hope um, to play more consistently throughout the season. Kevin? I agree with everything he just said right there. Um, just working hard and getting a good rap sheet for your team is uh, means a lot for your team, and it proves in our part, and you see it with us. You see that with us. Any further questions?
be joined by the head coach of the Belmont Bruins, Rick Bird. Uh, just identify yourself by name and affiliation. Raise your hand. We'll bring the mic around. Just wait for it uh, for our transcription purposes. And Rick, if you like, you can start with an opening statement. We'll open the floor for questions. Well, we're glad to be here. Obviously, it's um, um, it's it's a real thrill for our players, and um, I think it's uh, maybe uh, hopefully another step for our program. I th you know, it's just been 20 years or so since we went Division One, and and we've been fortunate to play in this tournament seven times previously. But uh, to be good enough to be selected as a large team uh, is um, a compliment to our kids and everybody that helps us um, help this program succeed. So uh, it's it's a big deal, and we're and we're uh, excited about it. Uh, happy to be playing. Temple in the sense that I have so much respect for Coach Dunphy and the kind of coach and person he's been and, and really happy that he uh, in his last year has made the NCAA tournament and if we uh, if we don't go further than this I'll be glad that Fran Dunphy's going further than this. Questions for Coach Bird right here on the right in the aisle. <coughs> Michael Presti, NCAA.com. Is there a larger message, the fact that Belmont got that a large bid, to, to other Belmonts of the world, to other mid-majors, the fact that the committee looked at what your work was and put you in? You know, there, I, I don't know what goes on in that room. Uh, I said from the beginning that we weren't going to campaign, at least certainly I wasn't going to campaign, and Belmont didn't campaign uh, for this spot. I think you have to trust that those – those men and women were selected because they've got integrity and they're going to do the best job they can. There, there's no question that over the past two or three or four years, there's been a lot of discussion about uh, the the Power Five, middle of the pack teams being chosen over uh, some what people thought were worthy uh, mid-major teams. I, I, I don't come down on either side of that equation, even though we're we're solidly on the mid-major side of things. Uh, I think what they're doing is right uh, in terms of trying to find the best teams, and I don't think they really ought to be categorized. It's very hard to compare. Let's just throw somebody out: Clemson or North Carolina State or Indiana, uh, with. Belmont or Greensboro or Furman or Lipscomb or any of the other people that were mentioned. It's just, it's just very difficult to know how we would have done in that league or how they would have done in our league. And uh, so I, I, can, I can get why it's tough for the committee. But I don't, as much as I'm, maybe we were the beneficiary of some of this discussion about mid-majors not making it, I don't know. Uh, I still don't think you, I still think you just try to find the best teams. I'm not going to take one side or the other, kind of. Is that a long answer to a short question? Sure, yeah, just uh, right there on your left. Uh, during that week, there were a lot of, I don't know if you followed on TV, but all the discussion about the ball, there were a lot of voices who came out strong for Belmont and said, you know, this team deserves to make it. How satisfying is that to, yeah. to hear other people talk so glowingly about your program? Yeah, it's it's um, you know I, I, it means a lot that um, I think they meant it. I mean, I don't uh, like I say I didn't I didn't I didn't call anybody uh, any of those guys you know that you're talking about whether it's Dick Vitale or Jay Billis or Matt Norlander or Seth Davis and um, I, I didn't. Uh, it's just I think it's what they really thought. Uh, hopefully, we've been around long enough and we've done things in a way that there's that there's respect for the program. Uh, you know, it's supposed to be about what the team do each year, and it's not supposed to be about anything else. But uh, but maybe this program's earned some respect from some people like that who really care about college basketball. Coach uh, Mark Marducci, the Philadelphia Inquirer, just want to. Get your impressions on Temple, what you've seen studying them over the last 24 hours. <laughs> yeah, I, um, well, I wish I had more time. I, I uh, uh, you know, again, Coach Dunphy, um, it's just, it, it's, 
it's fun to watch his teams play. Uh, it's it's fun for me to try to figure out what he's what he's telling them, uh, how to defend this, how to defend that. Uh, uh, they're obviously they're a very perimeter oriented, um, great guards. Uh, hard to guard one on one. Hard to guard off ball screens. Um, guys that can make tough shots. Um, it's it's going to be it's going to be critical for us to to find a way to get to get between our man and the goal and stay there and uh, make them take as tough a shots as we can and block people out and go get the rebound. Uh, so I, you know I'm I'm obviously impressed. They don't uh, uh, they they're just uh, but they're a team that's that's. Uh, Good on both ends of the floor. They're, they're a team that's good in transition offensively, and they're good in transition defensively. Uh, we like to run. We'd like to get some easy scores, but I think it's going to be hard against them. Uh, but I do think it's two teams that are um, that are pretty evenly matched. And uh, uh, you know, we haven't we haven't been in this game. We haven't been in this tournament against anybody other than a top 25 team in the seven times we've been here. Uh, so, uh, you know, it's 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 a little nicer feeling like you can go into into a game and uh, and you're playing somebody in your same neighborhood, kind of in terms of how good each team is. So, uh, we got to prove we belong. I'm sure there's plenty they think they've got to prove too. Uh, and uh, I'm just you know, I'm I just always enjoy coaching against guys that. Uh, Respect, and that, that's going to make this game more fun for me. Coach, one other question. Um, yeah. They they have two minutes of uh, NCAA experience. I believe you have zero, unless you have any transfers or anything. No. How about that? That neither team really. Is, uh, <laughs> I didn't I didn't realize that, and I'm just trying to learn their names still right now. You know, <laughs> don't ask me their names. I know their numbers. Uh, um, you know, for us. Um, that that's the first time since we went in 2006 that you could say that about one of our teams and and one of the the real gratifying things about making it this year is our two seniors who have been on really good teams for four years three conference championship teams but no ncaa tournament appearances until now that that they get to go because when we recruited them we were going pretty regularly and one of the reasons they came i'm sure is so they can go to ncaa tournaments and and so that's good. I don't. I don't. That's. Uh, I don't. You know. I think about a few years ago when Mercer beat Duke, or maybe even last year, Maryland, Baltimore County. I don't. Those teams hadn't been to the tournament until they did that. And so, who knows what's advantage disadvantage? In this case, uh, I don't think their two minutes is an advantage over our zero. So we'll say it's pretty even. Right here in the aisle. <clears throat> Coach o, Russ Steinberg, SB Nation, Mid-Major Madness. Uh, just wondering, when you have a team that is expected to finish near the top of your league, uh, do you try to put a schedule together um, anticipating that you could be in that large position, and how difficult is it to, to get games that could potentially help you get here? I, I never have uh, scheduled that way, partly because it's just, it's just really hard to schedule. It's just really hard to schedule, and sometimes you got to take what you can get. Uh, I, I do believe in um, in playing good teams, in playing a difficult schedule. I, I think it makes your team better by the time you get to January and you're playing your conference season. And so, for years we've played Middle Tennessee State home and home, uh, not in the same year, but we've played them. We played Western Kentucky for five years in a row now. Um, uh, we opened up this year with Illinois State. We always had to play two or three guarantee games. Uh, and, th and then all of a sudden, Lipscomb gets real good, and we play them twice in the same year. And uh, so uh, we, we haven't backed away. But I, I guess I never I – I don't think I've ever gone in the season thinking, hey, this team could get in that large bid. Uh, I go into it thinking we've got to be good enough by March to win that tournament. Uh, and, and a good example of what I'm talking about is that you, you can really think you're doing that well 
And then all of a sudden you play Middle Tennessee on the first year they've been down a long, long time. And Western Kentucky didn't turn out to be as good this year as everybody thought. Illinois State didn't turn out to be quite as good as everybody thought they were going to be. We had those three teams on our schedule that we thought would be a real asset if we won. Uh, and nothing against the, them. I mean, gosh, those guys have all beaten us and they've all had really good years. But, but that sounded like good planning, right? But it didn't necessarily turn out though. And yet when we – Lipscomb on every year home and home – turns out to be two great wins for us this year. So it's really hard to plan and, and get that done. Right here on the right. <clears throat> uh, Coach Sean Pastor from Owls Daily. Just curious about Nick's uh, status for tomorrow. He's, he's going to play. Um, he practiced to, today just a little bit ago for the very first time full speed, five on five. He was a little rusty and he was a little – he was a little tentative, uh, like you would be if you hadn't really gone full speed since you turned your ankle pretty bad. Uh, I'm hoping that another 24 hours, uh, our, our trainer would not let him be out there if she thought he could hurt it any worse. And I'm hoping another 24 hours with treatment and, and all that and, and a little adrenaline that you get when you play an NCAA tournament is going to help him be the player he was. Uh, before it got hurt, but it's still it's still a little iffy. We, it's just hard to know. But he's gonna he's gonna play, and he's excited about it. Uh, we'll just have to see if he's if he's as full speed as we hope he is. Wants him to be. We're here back, right? Nick Kerber, University of Dayton. As a mid major and an at large, do you feel any additional pressure to justify putting? more mid-majors in at-large positions in future tournaments? A little bit. Uh, I'm, you know, like we just talked about, there's been a lot of people that have been promoting our cause, um, and I don't know if it's about carrying the mid-major flag as much as is the Belmont flag, and, 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 uh, uh, and, and just just playing like those guys said we could play. They said we were a good team and uh, that we deserved to be here and that we could win games in this tournament. And, uh, and so I feel uh, a responsibility to those folks for standing up for us and hope that, uh, hope that we play like, um, like we have many, many times. We've had a lot of great wins and beat good teams and, and had a 14-game winning streak where we beat, I think, 13 of those teams by double figures. Uh, uh, we've had a really good year and have been a very good team much of the time, and that's that's what we want to look like tomorrow night. Any further questions for Coach Bird? Rick, thank, thank you <coughs> all. Thanks for your time. Good luck tomorrow night. Thank you all very much.